about. But without further ado, um, your amazing presenter, Walter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. All right, so again, we're at Denver Startup Week. And I just want to say thank you for joining us at the 11th Annual Denver Startup Week. And thank you to our title sponsors, Amazon, Capital One Cafe, Dell for Startups, and the Downtown Denver Partnership. Again, like Josh said, this is part of the product track um, hosted and sponsored by Pi Insurance. It's one of eight programming tracks aimed at supporting the entire entrepreneurial team. Um, just agreed to follow the code of conduct as well as to be photographed or recorded on video and be sure to share, share your experience online. Hashtag Denver Startup Week. Again, just another shout out to our sponsors. And again, especially Pi Insurance, workers comp that is easy as pie, serves small businesses exclusively. So thank you to Pi Insurance as well. So let's get going. So I am Walter Blunt, the president of Thinking Out Loud LLC. I am a certified agile scrum master, Lean Six Sigma black belt and fashion apparel expert. I got started in 2019 with something called Pop-Up Business School. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar, but I was able to sell my first products. It was called The Business Plan, and I created a headwear collection promoting entrepreneurship. Um, 2020, I was introduced to a program called Indie Black Businesses Matter, where I was able to continue on my journey. And 2021, I moved to Colorado with my fiance. And this is me at the Dairy Block the same time last year at a pop-up shop. Um, as you can see, I was the, at, the, at that time I was still in apparel, but I've always been working towards, you know, getting more involved in the product journey, and customer journey mapping and things like that. So that's just a little about me. I also just finished a white paper entitled Brainstorm for Success. It is available for download at www.thinkingoutloud.store. And let's get into it. So we're at Brainstorm for Success. Learn to select the right projects to improve customer satisfaction. Awesome. So this is a little about what we'll discuss. Brief overview. We're going to go over creative problem solving, continuous improvement, the DMAIC model versus the PDA, PDCA cycle. Um, we're going to go over why statements and then a few tools that I like to use for you know, developing ways to make things better, faster, and more cost effective. All right, so when we talk about creative problem solving, the first question I always like to ask is, how do you approach problems? And you could ask 100 people, you'll probably get 100 different answers. But I think, really, there are fundamentally three different ways that humans, we solve problems. First, trial and error followed by changing our perspectives. And last but not least, I think brainstorming should be definitely on that list. All right, so when we're talking about brainstorming, we're talking about continuous improvement and making things better, faster, and more cost effective. Continuous improvement is just always getting better, you know, always practicing, always putting your best foot forward and not being afraid to fail. I think a lot of times with brainstorming products and services, a lot of time, we hinder ourselves thinking everything needs to be perfect. The reality is it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be done. And then you improve as you go. So it's really about improving the quality and the user experience for customers and end users. End users meaning that in some process improvements, it's not always the customer that has to deal with the improvement. It might be a, a downstream or upstream department. It can be stakeholders. It can be a lot of different people who play a part. So when we talk about the DMAIC model, that is a very popular standard improvement model in Lean Six Sigma. It stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And this process you know, starts by defining what, what's the issue first, because you're not going to get past that first phase if you can't clearly define what your issue is or what problem you're trying to solve. So with that, the DMAIC model is a little bit more intense versus the PDC, PDCA cycle, where it's more plan, do, check, and act. And I, I like to call this like the karate kid, the wax on, wax off phase. You know, you're always just practicing, you're always doing what you need to do to make sure you're always checking and improving and, you know, keeping your best foot forward. So, so like I said, in the DMAIC model, very huge in leading Six Sigma, is what's called a why statement. And it's a clear statement of the intended improvement. So before a process improvement begins, you have a project charter, 
that's a part of your defined phase. And in that project charter, it provides a clear understanding of the project, the stakeholders, corporate strategy, and ROI. So, I mean, unless you have your own startup, most times there's gonna be someone else you're gonna to have to present this to, and you're gonna to have to convince them that this is worth doing. So a big part of it is you know, maintaining stakeholder communication, corporate strategy, and return on investment. Because ultimately, return on investments, we're in business to make money, right? So the Y statement, there's also an equation, Y equals FX, which is make blank process better, faster, or more cost effective. Or you could just make a process better, you could just make a process faster, or you can make it more cost effective, or you can do all three. It's ultimately up to you and what you're trying to achieve. So I like to start with the SWOT analysis. I think the SWOT analysis doesn't get enough love. I feel like a lot of times we stop ourselves from getting to this point because we, once we get the strengths and opportunities, we never really want to address weaknesses and threats, right? But my mentor said, sometimes the best thing to do is to think inside the box, right? And this is your box. So we're talking strategy and vision. So the primary objective of SWOT analysis is to help organizations develop an awareness of the factors involved in making strategic business decisions. So if you have strengths, of course, you wanna focus on those. Weaknesses, you wanna know what your weaknesses are, you wanna address them and you wanna improve upon them. And then I think one of the most important parts on the SWOT analysis is opportunities, right? Because if you have an opportunity, why wouldn't you take advantage of it, right? So if, you're, if you have a certain skill set that you can expand upon, so say you're in a business and you are a writer and you have strengths in writing, why not use that opportunity you know, to, strength, you know, to strengthen other areas of your business as well? And threats, of course, it's always good to know your threats because you have to know what your competition is. You know, I mean, threats could even be you know, a pandemic. I mean, I mean, the list goes on. Nowadays, you always have to be prepared for anything. All right, so like I said, stakeholders are really, really important in process improvement and brainstorming in general, especially if you're in business. So communication is key, right? It's crucial to identify stakeholders early on and develop a communication plan for them. So we have here, you know, we have your high power, low interest, high power, high interest, low power, low interest, and low power, high interest. So I just like to go over that because for me, uh, one high power, high interest would be, you know, state and local government agencies. So when I was doing apparel and branding, the Department of Revenue was a pretty big stakeholder. They're gonna to wanna to know how much money you're making in and they're gonna make sure you pay your taxes every month. Another big one for me is legal. Um, that's something we always have to take into consideration depending on what industry you are in or if you have uh, intellectual properties or anything along those lines. It's always important to keep everyone involved. And you know, at certain levels, even your family can be a stakeholder, right? Because they're depending on you to be successful to con to continue to make sure everything goes smooth. So here's another tool, it's called the SIPOC diagram. It stands for Suppliers, Inputs, Process, Output, and Customers. It's a high level process map used to define a process from beginning to end before work begins. So the SIPOC diagram here, start with your suppliers. So the beginning of a process always begins with your suppliers, right? And then from there, it moves in to your inputs. And then from there, it helps you develop your process, right? So Starting from your suppliers, you got to think about transportation, shipping, depending on what your, you know, what your industry is. It could be, you know, software, it could be making sure you have all the things from your suppliers to, in, to make sure your process runs smoothly. And then your inputs is usually employees or certain things that you do to make sure that the process runs smoothly and everything goes as planned. As well as your outputs, which kind of get to the last point and help define the things you need to make sure your customers are happy. But at the same time, you don't have to have a complex SIPOC diagram. You could easily do step one is this, step two is this, step three is this. So, but this is a very easy tool to use to kind of develop your process from beginning to end before work even begins. Another part, another important part is what we call voices. And a lot of times, it's not just the voice of the customer, it could be the voice of the process, it could be the voice of the industry, it could be the voice of you know, numerous things. And it's used to capture feedback from customers to provide them with best in class service and quality, right? So customer voices could be simple as getting direct discussions, 
customer specs, surveys, focus groups, observation and reviews. A lot of this stuff you can get from, you know, just listening, you know, you know, being a good leader, listening, you know, listening to what your employees are talking about, what managers, what corporate is, you know, intending and things along those lines. And also reviews. It's easy to go online and just look up a review and see what customers are saying about your product. Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Is checkout time too fast? Is the customer journey too complex? So it's really important to get those voices down to understand what your customers are experiencing while they're using your product or service. So here what comes into what's called critical to quality or a CTQ tree is what we call it in Lean Six Sigma. And the purpose of a CTQ tree is to convert customer needs and wants to measurable requirements for the business to implement. So it starts with the need, right? So what do your customers need, right? Maybe they just need a simplified checkout process, right? So then you have to identify what your drivers are. How can you go from, how can you get a simplified checkout process? What is necessary for that to happen? What are the requirements? What are the drivers? How does this happen? How do you make it happen? So this is a very good tool for you know, getting that voice of the customer and then finding a way to implement it into your strategy as you go along. So here's our next diagram. It's named after Japanese professor Kairo Ishikawa. And an Ishikawa diagram identifies cause and effect, structures brainstorming sessions, and sorts ideas. So a good example I like to use is, so we'll just say we're playing basketball outdoors, right? And the effect is we keep missing our shots, right? So when we, can, we can use an Ishikawa diagram to help determine what are the reasons we're missing shots, right? Could it be our method? Could it be our shooting form, the way we're shooting the ball? Could it be the machine, the rim is bent, tilted, you know? Could it be the material? Could it be, so for material, could it be the ball itself? Is there too much air in it, you know? Simple things like that. Or it could be the people. Maybe these people aren't good at free throws. Their percentage is low, you know? And also, like I said, if we're playing outside, the environment also plays a role. Is it windy? Is it hot? Are people getting fatigued? So I really think the Ishikawa diagram is really good, especially for brainstorming, but especially for defining the cause and effect in your process, right? So the cause and effect diagram or Ishikawa diagram is also called a cause and effect diagram or a fishbone diagram as well, as you can tell by kind of the you know, kind of looks like a fish, fish bones, you know. <laughs> All right, here's another really easy tool that we like to use. It's called the five whys. This is a very, very simple tool, but very effective. Um, it starts by, you know, determining the root cause of a problem by repeating the question why. So you say, I wake up, wake up late for work. Why? Well, because uh, I didn't go to sleep on time last night. Well, why didn't you go to sleep on time last night? And it just goes on and on until you get to the root cause of the issue, and that allows you to develop a countermeasure to make sure that doesn't happen again. Does anyone want to participate? You want to try five whys? You want to go? All right, so my why, my problem is, let's say, um, let's just, yeah, let's just go with the one we had. So I'm waking up late for, I keep waking up late for work. And then you say why. Well, because I can't get to sleep on time because I'm, I'm doing other things. And why is that? Because I can't stay focused and I just need to figure out what I want to do. And why don't you know what you want to do? Because I don't have a plan. <laughs> so, or a plan or a strategy. So. And why don't you have a plan or strategy? I haven't been able to sit down and develop one and figure out which way I want to move forward. And why haven't you spent time on that? Well, because I haven't identified what, uh, what process I want to improve yet. So things like that, it's just really easy tool to develop a countermeasure. So my- I'm gonna find out why. <laughs> <laughs> there's like six more whys. Yeah, there. there's a lot of whys for sure. You don't like the job, that's why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that could be simple countermeasure though, seriously. But at the end of the day, you gotta find the root cause of the problem. You can't say I have a problem, but you don't know why, right? Because you'll never be able to develop a countermeasure. All right, so this is my good friend. His name's Tim Woods. He's an acronym for the Eight Deadly Waste. Um, some people may be familiar with this, but Tim Woods is just an acronym standing for transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, 
overprocessing, overproduction, defects, and skills. So one of the eight deadly wastes uh, is transportation, right? Everyone knows that nowadays with the pandemic, it takes forever for stuff to get shipped and to uh, get things shipped out and for all that's going on. And then inventory is another waste. Do you have too much inventory? Do you have too little inventory? Either way, it could be a waste. If you have too much inventory, then you have product that's sitting in a warehouse that's not being used and you spent X amount of dollars you know, on inventory. Or it could be you have too little inventory and there are people who want your product but can't receive it because you don't have it yet. And then you have motion, which could be simply um, how long it takes. So say you're working in an assembly line or a manufacturing, how long does it take you from get to get from point A to point B? Are there, set of, are there things in place to ensure that the motion and the movement all run smoothly? Or it could be simply waiting, meaning how many people have to sign off on this before we can get things going, right? So who's involved? You know, what are we waiting for? And how can we make it work? Overprocessing, right? It's like, are we doing too much? Are we making too much product? Are we, you know, not considering that maybe we need to scale back a little bit? Or overproduction, kind of along the same lines. Are we doing too much? Are we overproducing? Are we, you know, using manpower and hours to get things done that really don't need to be done just yet, right? So that's another thing you need to consider. And defects. Defects is a huge waste, right? Because not only did you spend all that time creating and producing this product, but now it doesn't work, it's faulty. So then you still have to go back and do it all over again. So defects are another huge part. But also skills, right? Skills. How many people on your team are trained enough to do and achieve what you need to get done? So say you have a department and only two people know how to get things done. What if those two people are on vacation or you're supposed to just wait for them to come back and the process is just staying still for that whole time? Or you're gonna find ways to train and implement different ways and alternatives for things to get done if say your process owner or product manager is not available. So Tim Woods is very good to identify your eight deadly ways and to kind of just you know, take them, take them on one, one step at a time. But that's kind of all I have right now. Um, do you have any questions? And I hope you learned something new today. So this was Brainstorm for Success. I appreciate everyone for coming out. And I just wanted to you know, kind of give an opportunity to simplify this a little bit. I know a lot of times in, in my field, Lean Six Sigma, it, it, people get scared you know, or intimidated by all the lingo and the language and the uh, data analysis. But a lot of times, it's simple questions we can ask ourselves. It's simple things that we can fix and improve. And like we did, we did the five whys. Things like that are just as easy, you know, to get things done as a, you, you know, spending X amount of time doing the data analytics, statistics, and all that, when you can just sit back and look at the process from the outside looking in and be like, that's the issue, right? So thanks for everyone for coming out. You can visit my website. It's called www.thinkingoutloud.store. And I hope you all learned something new today. And does anyone have any questions? Steve. All right, so I'll start with a question. Um, so you went through the Lean Six Sigma, the intense training. Yes. What uh, level of Lean Six Sigma training would you recommend for someone in a kind of standard product management role? All right, so a standard product management role, I would, I would, rec uh, I would recommend the Green Belt. It's kind of uh, more for employees who are in a company who may say the CEO or the manager at the top is like, hey, we need to get this project done. Does anyone know how to use Lean Six Sigma to, get to achieve this? And a green belt is the first place you usually start before you get to a black belt. And a green belt is usually someone who's working within a company. So below the green belt is what's called a yellow belt. It's a lot less technical, but it still gives you a brief overview of the tools to use and things like that. So definitely, I think a green belt is a great place to start. Any other questions? Josh? In your um, apparel business, did kind of looking through all these frameworks, was there one that you thought applied well and gave you insight into sort of how to improve things or areas of your business mm -hmm. you wanted to? Yeah, so in the apparel game, it's a lot of uh, waiting because, you know, not only if you're not sure producing your own shirts or products, you have to ship, you have to order um, materials, designing. Um, the production. So I think the SIPOC diagram really helped me identify the, a lot of the bottlenecks in my apparel process. Um, another one I would say is the, um, the SWOT analysis, because at the same time, 
I have my apparel brand and I have a lot of experience, I guess I didn't really explain, but before I moved to Denver, I worked for the largest North American licensed retailer, sports retailer, and I worked as the custom production manager on a lot of different designs and headwear. Um, I'm not gonna name the company, but they're pretty big and they're usually in all the malls. But um, yeah, I worked a lot with them and that's kind of how I got into apparel and apparel design and manufacturing. Any other questions? Um, as far as, you know, so apparel, it's very much the design element. Do you have a specific recommendation for uh, applying some of this element to the actual creative design process? Um, because that's kind of, you know, the, the left brain management of mm -hmm. the systems and processes. But in addressing the creative challenge of, you know, what you want to design and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. because you don't really know until you like, it's out there and it doesn't sell or it does sell or whatever. But like, do you have anything that would help to filter and organize the creative design process of building product? Yeah, so um, in my white paper, I talk a lot about some of the problems and benefits of, you know, brainstormings and creativity. Um, a lot of times when we're thinking about creativity, um, we find a lot of blockages uh, most times. And it's one of the problems is fear of failure, um, fear of rejection, especially in creativity, because, you know, when you're first getting started, you don't always want to tell people your idea, right? You don't always want to share you know, your first, your first iteration of your, whatever you're trying to do. But I think a lot of times when we're talking about creativity, in the beginning, you just got to do it. And I think one of the good tools to use, again, is the, uh, is the SWOT analysis. I think that tool, even from the beginning of creativity, is focusing on the strengths that you have uh, when you're starting to, you know, build a creative. What, what part of the creative process do you feel most comfortable in? Is it the implementation? Is it the beginning, the design? Or is it the conclusion and the rolling it out and things like that? So I think just getting back to the basics and understanding, you know, what parts, you know, work for you and what doesn't and just kind of weeding your process out little by little. That answered your question. Any more questions? One more. Steven. Uh, have you ever met anyone named Tim Woods and was he a wasteful person? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't met Tim Woods in person. Um, I'm only know him online, unfortunately. I hope I <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you're an acronym for waste? <laughs> but yeah, any more questions um, before we finish up? But, no, if not, I just appreciate everyone for showing up early this morning, sitting through my presentation. This is my first iteration of Brainstorm for Success. Um, again, like I said, I've just finished a white paper on brainstorming. There's my website, www.thinkingoutloud.store. And again, just appreciate everyone for showing up. And again, shout out to Pi Insurance because it's just as easy as Pi, right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you and I appreciate everyone for coming up. Thank good. you. Yeah, some of those frameworks I didn't know if that was helpful. I think, yeah, I think we're good. Let me see if we can get this up and running again before the next one. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, you're this good. worked great, though. Thank you. We're no. good with I was, like, TV. pretty good on timing, too. It's yeah. 9.31, so. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, are you going to be able to join in the other ones? There's one in 30 minutes. It's pretty cool. Yeah, well, we might as well just stay yeah, hanging out. Yeah. yeah. I think that one's a panel, so it should be Thank interesting. You. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for showing yeah. up. I appreciate it. Cool. Um, yeah, that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, or did you go to any other Startup Week stuff? Oh, uh, you're probably cramming on this. Yeah. Like from your I'm gonna try and do oh, the yeah, yeah. next one. So maybe I might yeah. Tim, since we have the see if we can get it fixed. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, Thanks. We went to the stronger together.